Um, Nikhil, so you said that you've already successfully made software development and web, web applications for previous customers and it's been organic growth and they've given you referrals and that's how you've grown, right? Okay, so I think one of the things that might be beneficial for you is to get some testimonials from those people, um, sort of like a before and after case scenario. That way you could send that to people, you could use it on your website, people could download it, you could start to you know, collect names of people who are interested in exchange for some of these reports. Um, I think approaching people's competitors would also be really good. Like that's a strategy that I've used before. It's kind of nasty, but it's business. So it's kind of like, you know what, um, maybe not a direct com competitor because your existing client would not like that, but you can basically go to a different city or something like that. It just depends on how it works. I'm not quite sure. But it's like, you know what, we developed this thing for a competitor of yours and now we have a special, we're, we're offering, you know, something similar but different and wanted to know if you wanted to take advantage of it because competition can really drive people to do things. Um, yeah, competitors. Similar. And then what are the benefits? You know, so somebody, a business may not be thinking about getting a web application and so they're not looking for one, they may not want to buy one, but if you can start to sort of create demand and, and find out what the frustrations are of different businesses, it's like, okay, so is your business not running as efficiently as you'd like or do you not have as much time as you like? You know, are you losing paperwork? Is it hard for you to track your files? Whatever problems, and you have to do research on that, what problems small business owners are having. And then if you can create, you know, a web app or a personalized develop, um, a web app or software development that's customized just for them that would be a really really great solution you can also maybe do some white label servicing it's like well hey you offer this service or product why don't you let us develop an app or software or web development for you and then you can offer it to your serve your clients so they're also making money and you're making money um, and like I said showcasing work if you can do maybe return on investment scenarios or the long-term benefits because Selling something people don't think they need, like back in the day when people were selling fax machines, they're like, why in the hell would I need a fax machine, right? And it's like, well, you actually do need it. This is the way of the future. And you can sort of play on COVID. You can say, you know, COVID has changed everything. Everyone's sort of online. Um, you have to sort of get with the digital revolution and you're going to fall behind. You know, here's a simple, you know, you can do a discount introductory thing. Like, hey, you know, you might need a larger web application, but why don't we start with this little thing and see if it makes an uh, a difference in your business. So offering things that are free or a demonstration or a value, people will be much more likely to take you up on an offer like that rather than, you know, spend twenty-five dollars to $25,000 on a web application right out the gate. Yeah. Well, I just, I, I was just on a call yesterday and someone told me they just simply dedicate two hours a day between 10 and 12 to get on the phone and actually talk to people because we can hide behind our desks and we can post all the stuff we want to on social media and we can make it all the videos and write all the blogs we want to, but unless we're developing relationships and building trust and, you know, developing those networks and following up, you're going to have a very, no one's going to go to your website or see your video and, be, and write you a check. So you have to make, you know, two, two to, you know, two hours a day and where you're just on the phone talking to people. Yeah, I would go for I would go for a goal of 10, 10 a day. Well, you won't get 10 phone calls right at first, but yeah, you'll you'll have two or three phone calls a day, but you should grow and aim to have 10 calls a day. I'm a niche marketer. I like niche marketing because then you can replicate and duplicate processes and you have the same jargon, you know, you can sort of network amongst people in the same industry. And then once you build success in one area, then you can just replicate that process and add it and, you know, use it with a different industry. For example, you might go after dental surgeons at first or then you might go after, you know, some sort of B2B financial institution next. As long as you have your sort of process and systems in place, you can duplicate it across different industries. And now that you've had your broad general experience, then that's already an advantage to you. You don't have to stay there, in my personal experience.
Yeah, I know. I loved, I loved everything. I loved everything that you said. Um, you know, showcasing how to use it. I think it's a really good idea. Going to, I was, I was just wondering if you're only doing B two B or B two C because if you were to get together with, you know, home stagers or maybe home stagers isn't the best one, but you know, these people that would be able to have your stuff on display and have people say, "Oh, where did you get that?" You know what I mean? They get that them that exclusive and sort of elite feeling. Um, and uh, when I was on with, with one of the other mentees, I was talking about when anyone is ever starting business that they have no money or time. I always say that video is the way to go. And I think if you you know ask the, these artists to just like have a story, like let's see them in their village, let's see them in their home, let's see them with their art. You know, create a story. You can start getting that stuff on social media, on YouTube. Um, and I also think differentiating yourself from Etsy and Wayfair, and I think Tarfik mentioned Wish and Amazon, I think those are great stories. It's like, hey, you know what, like using those, using sort of their strengths against them. Yeah, Amazon is really great. They offer a lot of products, but how difficult is it for you to find what you really want? You know what I mean? Like come to our store. You have to, you have to say why Etsy is not good, why Wayfair is not good, why Amazon is good, so that people can start um, looking at you and if you provide sort of like a a customized white glove service you won't have to worry about your shipping costs because it's like oh I'm getting this special thing and I also like what Tarfik said again making it a story talking that it's handcrafted you know your five your your five hundred dollar investment of this lasts this family XYZ amount of time so people sort of feel good about their purchase kind of like with van shoes like my kid my, my kid years ago was in love with van shoes and she's like oh mom you have to buy these shoes because you know then they donate shoes to somebody else so you know what I mean that sort of so social enterprise aspect to it of it yeah but I think I'm um, definitely storytelling showcasing videos how to use why it's different talking about the handcrafted you know the, the, the specialized attention they get when purchasing and how it's different than this big sort of commodity like Etsy Wayfair and Amazon is a really good way to differentiate yourself and and posting those things on social media, I think, will be really good for you because they're they're art. It's beautiful. It's decor, you know. So um, I think having Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram would probably be really good for you, and it help you to be found as well. Yeah.